Would you believe it? We are nearly at the complete end of the 2017 tennis season already, which means it's time for the WTA Finals in Singapore. <laughs> Hello one and all, welcome to the tennis vlog, remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Well here we are, time has flown and for the WTA tennis players the season for most is at an end, however there are one or two more tournaments to come. But of the few weeks of competition that are left for the women, only one tournament really stands out, the WTA finals in Singapore. This tournament has an eight player field and only the eight women who collected the most ranking points this season are allowed to compete unless one of them gets injured and the first alternate comes in and unless someone else gets injured and the second alternate comes in. The final eight have touched down in Singapore, the draw has been made, so I am here to give you eight things to know ahead of this year's WTA finals. So first off, only two of the season's four Grand Slam champions are present at the WTA finals this year. Garbine Muguruza was triumphant at Wimbledon and Jelena Ostapenko at the French Open, however Serena Williams triumphant in Melbourne and Sloan and Stevens, who rose victorious in New York, are not present. Serena, of course, gave birth to her first child in September, and Sloane Stevens only began playing halfway through the year after receiving foot surgery at the end of last season. Therefore, she did not compile enough ranking points to play in Singapore. Fact number two of the eight player field, only Venus Williams has won the title here before. This happened once for Williams and was back in 2008 when the tournament was played on outdoor hard courts in Qatar. More on Venus on a less positive note, she is the only player in Singapore not to have won a WTA title this season. This is largely because the American peaked at the Grand Slams, reaching two major finals in one season for the first time in 14 years, and making the semi-finals at another, the US Open, she was two points away from beating Stevens, so you can only imagine how different that result could have been. To emphasise Venus' accomplishments at the four big tournaments still further, she and Muguruza were the only women to make the second week at all four Grand Slams this season. Muguruza obviously won Wimbledon, and while she wasn't incredibly impressive in New York, she still maintained consistency across the four major tournaments. Turning our focus back to the upcoming tournament, none of last season's semi-finalists are present in this year's WTA Finals. Dominika Sabulkova was the overall champion last season, beating Angelique Kerber in the final. Their semi-final victims were Agnieszka Radwanska and Zvetlana Kuznetsova. None of these four women qualified. Perhaps surprisingly, out of this squad it is Kuznetsova who has just squeezed in a trip to Singapore as an alternate. She is the second alternate with Kristina Mladenovic coming in at ninth place overall. It has to be particularly disheartening for Kerber who was playing so well this time last season and entered the current year as the world number one. On that note, we come to our sixth fact to know, and that is that three of the five women who have been ranked at world number one this season are present in Singapore. Kerber and Serena obviously not here, however, Karolina Pliskova, Garbinia Muguruza, and current world number one Simona Halep are all in the draw. All three of these women became world number one for the first time this season, and it happened for all of them in the second half of the year, so that just tells you how close things have been. Halep has not won a Grand Slam title yet, however, of the three women just mentioned, she has come closest to claiming the title at the WTA Finals. In 2014, she blazed past Serena Williams in the round robin stage before falling victim to the American in the final. Your seventh thing to know that is so difficult to pronounce, is that three of the eight players this week are making their WTA Finals debut. They are Alina Zvitolina, who won five WTA titles this season, including two premier events, Yelena Ostapenko, who won her maiden Grand Slam title at the French Open and her maiden WTA title at the Korea Open more recently, and Caroline Garcia, who after an iffy year pulled it together for a late season flourish. She won Wuhan and Beijing in back-to-back -back weeks and they were two premier events. And finally, sadly, the groups really aren't that balanced. After a crazy year, we ended up with eight players at the WTA Finals who really bring a widespread of variety. These eight players are initially split into two groups for a round-robin format to see who progresses to the semi-finals. These are the white group and the red group. However, the splitting could have gone a lot better. All the biggest hitters have fallen into the white group, while those with a more counter-punching style are in the red group. This doesn't mean that one group is going to be more competitive than the other, but it could mean that the matches are less compelling 
It could have the benefit of making the semi-finals more exciting because last season it wasn't the most tantalising of lineups. But I'm sure there are many people who share my opinion that things would have looked a lot better if there was more of a jumbling of game style. So there they are, your eight things to know, and the big question now is who is going to win the tournament? I think the season as a whole has probably seen Mikarutha as the most consistent player, which the WTA themselves acknowledged by awarding her the Player of the Year award. However, the Spaniard usually plays best when less is expected of her. She did okay after Wimbledon, but she wasn't stunning. For me, going on career achievements and pure talent, Venus Williams is the standout among these eight players. However, she has made a bit of a habit of coming one step away and falling this season. Players like Ostapenko and Garcia have the potential to be really lethal when they're playing with confidence. The question for them is whether they will be overawed by the situation and whether they will take to the conditions of the court. Vitalina is a definite dark horse. She was leading the tour in terms of ranking points gained for for a few months this season. But although she dominates Caroline Wozniacki in their head-to-head, -head, both Wozniacki and Simona Halep have experienced success at this tournament before, so it really is a hard one to call. If you are feeling brave and want to make a prediction, please leave me a comment and let me know who you think will come out on top or who you guess will come out on top. And I will give a shout out to anyone who names the correct eventual champion and also the correct win-loss records they will end with. As a ninth alternate fact for you, the winner of the last two WTA finals has come out on top via a 3-2 win-loss record. So that's it from me today. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you for watching and I'll see you at the next video.